Hello everybody, my name is Ashley Marcinkus. I'm going to be a senior next year studying elementary education. Um, on campus, I'm involved in Camp Kesem as well as Office of Student Life, which allows me to make these fantas fantastic videos for you um, every two weeks. So the previous videos have been about preparing for orientation and registration. The last video was about picking classes. And now that orientation and registration is coming up this week and then the following week, um, I'm here to talk about what to expect. So I'm going to run through some general things that I'll make sure everyone knows, um, and then we'll open it up to questions. So feel free to start asking questions, and I'll answer them as we go. Um, they can be about orientation, registration, Augustana in general, whatever you're really worried about. I'm here to make sure that you have a great experience, that someone relatable is sharing this information with you, and to just overall make this a less intimidating situation, because I know it can be nerve-wracking. I was nervous, so if you're nervous, that's totally normal. No worries. I'm here to help. Um, so let's get started. So to begin, expect that um, this day is going to be jam-packed full day. So you need to make sure that you're here at 845. You're going to go to the Gerber Center, which is the big building with the CSL, the library, the brew, all that fun jazz. Um, big parking lot. Find a great space and then head in and they'll give you more directions as well as information as how the rest of the um, schedule is going to go, how your day is going to go. Just know that the majority of the day, you and your parents are going to be separate. That's intentional. They have parent things to learn and you have student things to learn. Um, and you can catch up on the way home and share all the fun information you guys both learned. So just expect that you guys are going to be separate and that's totally normal. That is planned. Um, so just be aware of that. Moving on, um, in general, these events have about 80 to 100 students attending. So know that you're not going to be alone. There are a lot of other people around you that are feeling just as nervous, just as anxious, excited as you are. It may not seem like it, but they are. So just know that you're going to start seeing faces you're going to see at Augustana every day. Um, and that's really exciting. You're going to start feeling like an Augustana student. Um, during this day, you're going to meet current students, upperclassmen, faculty, um, advisors, a peer mentor plenty of people that will become your resources and the beginning of your Augustana community, which is very exciting. Um, moving on. So yes, like I said, you're going to meet a peer mentor and a faculty advisor. Um, it's probably not going to be yours, but they will have plenty of experience and knowledge to answer any of your questions or confusions during the day and just to help you out to best prepare for Welcome Week and overall being an Augustana student. So don't be afraid to ask some questions and then you get to know more people, more faces, more names, which just makes um, coming back for real for Welcome Week much less intimidating. You know that you've already known some people, you know some faces, you know my face, you can always say hi to me. Um, and it's just less intimidating and in knowing that you can make friends and that um, you already know some people on campus. So... In general, don't be shy. Um, feel free to talk to people, um, introduce yourselves, say a funny joke, tell a story, um, comment on their lunch options, whatever. Whatever sparks a conversation um, will then get you introduced to new people and making new friends. And like I said, joining the Augustana community um, and just feeling at home. So that's your goal. And you're going to meet so many new people. It's okay if you forget their names. No worries. But at least you'll be able to recognize people and know that you're not going to a place where you know absolutely no one. So at least you know one person here, Ashley. So if you see me, you can say hi. I'll be at orientation days um, helping with some icebreakers. So I'm a res resource to you as well as the faculty and other students that will be around. So don't be afraid to pull them aside if you have a question or um, just hanging out or getting to know them. That way you feel more comfortable. Okay, so for orientation and registration know that you will be taking your ID photo it's very exciting so you want to be photo ready um, this photo will be on your ID for four years so make sure it counts um, prep style do whatever you got to do to feel comfortable um, know that it may not be perfect my photo ID like cut off my neck so it's just my head so they're a little goofy but it's gonna be great you'll get through it it'll be awesome um, then you get to take that home with you have a little souvenir for the day um, and then just get excited for using it in the fall it's coming up super quick and it's really exciting okay in general you are asked to bring some paperwork to orientation um, most of it in 
includes like your W-4 to work um, on campus, as well as like health forms or other um, information or things you haven't filled out yet or um, brought in. So make sure you have those completed before you come. That way you can just hand it to them and move on to the next thing. Um, because there's so many people at orientation, there will be lines, there will be some waiting, but the better prepared you are, um, the faster they'll go and you'll get to do more engaging, exciting things and social things rather than standing in line all day because that's not really ideal. Um, oh, okay. Don't forget to purchase your Augie Reads book. This can be done at the bookstore or like online. Um, it's called The World Between Me or something like that. It's on um, augustana.edu. Let me look up the title. Um, but this is awesome. So you read the book during the summer, so it's called Between the World and Me. Between the World and Me. Sounds like a good book. It intrigued me. Um, so that book, you're going to read it during the summer, and then online and with the book or uh, during orientation registration, you're given like a sheet that will describe the um, project or the paper you need to write. Um, mostly it's just a, a general like summary of it or um, answering a certain question. That's what I did. Um, so then you'll bring that paper and the assignment and the book to your FYI course. And that's kind of how you start your first year inquiry course, which is kind of like a, an English class for freshmen, just to introduce and make sure that you're reading and writing at the right level for Augustana and just getting you set up for a good foundation at Augie. So make sure you read that book, do your paper, do a little bit, bit each day, and then it will be done. You don't have to worry about it. I fully, fully, fully suggest that you get it done before you get to Augustana for Welcome Week. Um, welcome Week is a very social time where you're finally living in your dorm, you're starting college, and you don't want to be stuck on Sunday night writing your paper while you want to socialize with your new friends. That's just not fair to you. So think ahead, get it done, and then you don't have to worry about it. Okay, Augie Reads book, awesome. Yeah, so make sure you do that assignment before class starts. It's pretty important. Start on the right foot. So yeah, um, no questions so far, so I'm going to keep talking. Feel free to ask any questions. I am here for you. Oh, I got one. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I'm an elementary education major. So because that entails a lot of different subjects, because I will teach all those subjects, um, I only have one major. But I know one other LED major who had a minor in French, so it's possible, not super suggested, but possible. Um, my roommate, on the other hand, is a double major and a minor. Um, my other roommate is a single major. So it just depends on what you're interested in um, and what that specific major entails. A lot of them you can pair up or do minors with. It's just that LED is really intense and full. We even have like... Um, it's not intense, but it's <laughs> full of classes. We even get um, like overages on um, credits because we have so much to take. So I didn't take a minor, but you are more than welcome to do as many majors and minors as possible. Um, and that work with your schedule without totally overstressing you. Um, so my perspectives, I took a political science course. Um, I took a philosophy course called life and death. If you can get in that class, it's amazing. Um, very challenging and just different. What else? Um, I took a History 131 course, which was um, like world, no, it was like 1870 to World War II. So I was like that time frame. Really cool, interesting, made me rethink how to write a history paper, which is cool. Um, what else? I took a Spanish 300 class for my first term. It was actually my first college course and very intimidating, but that's like what I placed into thinking I wanted to be a minor. Um, <coughs> so that was a little intimidating, but we got through it. Um, what other perspectives? Psych psychology 100. A lot of different majors um, need that perspective just because it covers a lot of different disciplines. Um, so yeah, you're, there's a bunch of different perspectives. If you watch the video from last time, you t it tells you um, the perspectives that you'll have as a freshman while you're registering. So then it kind of limits it so it's not as intimidating. Um, and you can pick which ones you're interested in. So if you have any questions on that, you can review that video from two weeks ago. It was great, if I do say so myself. Um, and then your third question, do you feel pressured to pick a major slash how do you pick? So I've known I wanted to be an LED major for a very long time. So um, I just, I knew, so I wasn't really pressured. You have um, a long time to declare 
the earliest you can declare is um, spring term of your freshman year. So like at the end of the year, that way you've kind of dabbled in different perspectives or gen eds um, and you know that you're set or set for now because a lot of people change their majors too. Um, and then you go to the registrar's office and you sign a little form and they turn it in and it's all official. Um, so that's how you pick but really use the perspectives to be able to explore different um, disciplines and different parts of the liberal arts. That's the amazing thing about Augie is that it is liberal arts and you get to explore a little bit of everything. And then you can decide. Um, my One of my best friends didn't decide or declare until like middle of sophomore year because she kept going back and forth and she didn't know what she wanted to do within the medical field. Um, like I said, my roommate is a double major and a minor, but she just switched them this last year, which was my junior year. So really it's flexible. Um, and working with your advisor helps the best because they can guide you in the right way or like help you figure out what you're interested in. Um, okay, so the credits. Every, let's see if I remember this from the last video. Every semester you will take three, four credit classes, no more, no less. And then you can take one to two, um, one or two credit classes, just depending um, on how many you have. I think it was 36, um, 36 or 34 credits per year. So as long as it fits in that um, without going over, then you're solid. Um, and then the perspectives will be a four credit class. So um, yeah your 100 level class will be four credits, 200 level, four credits. Um, the one credit classes are more like specific to certain majors or like a trip that you might be going on um, or just like smaller classes that focus on more specific things that don't um, elicit four credits. So that's kind of how the credits work. Um, we're transitioning into semesters next year. So that's a whole new ball game. Um, I've never experienced semesters in a college, so it's a little different. I'm still getting used to the idea of it. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's accurate, but if not, or if you have questions, review the last video. I went all over that for like an hour. So that will be a fun listen for you. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Career planning aid. Yes, that is all CORE does. So CORE stands for like careers, opportunities, research, and exploration, I think. It'd be pretty impressive if I just nailed that. Um, it's in the Olin Auditor. No, it's in the Olin building, the big white one. Um, and it's on the main floor and the second floor, and they are all career building all the time. Um, so they help you prepare your um, resume, or they help you explore different career options, or they help you get an internship. They are a great resource for you if you're not quite sure what you want to major in, or you want to get hands-on experience, or you want to shadow, um, anything like that, that is for you. So core is great. You could visit there the first day of classes if you want to. You can become best friends with them. You can work there. Um, it's a great place with many resources. Good question. Uh -uh. Yes, so math. Um, depending on like if you take an AP test or a certain math class that you took um, in, cl in high school, so like the certain level you reached, that will determine um, what class you'll be in. Some some majors, like my major, has specific, specific elementary education math courses. Um, other majors, if it's a math major, then they're going to be more advanced. So you maybe start at Calc 1 and then work your way up. It just depends on your experience. And I'm sure um, the faculty advisor that will be there to help you pick classes um, will be able to help you. I don't know if a lot of people take math right away. Um, it just depends on your major or like your intended major. Um, but yes, feel free to ask them and they'll be able to help you. Okay. Okay, so when you go to orientation, um, if you have dual credit classes or AP class um, results or grades or anything like that, make sure you bring a copy of that to um, orientation registration and show your faculty advisor because then they will pro appropriately place you in the next level class or can um, eventually like show that you've already taken this class to so make sure you bring that so then they can bring it to the right person if you can get in the system and you don't have to worry about it. Um, and then residence halls. So two videos ago for like general sign up, there's a residence hall um, what was I going to say? <laughs> residence hall, like, um, 
a quiz survey type thing which describes like your personalities. Um, I think it's due in early July or maybe mid-June. I don't know. You have to watch the video again. But um, what you don't really pick residence halls. You just say whether or not you already have a roommate or if you want a random roommate. You describe your personalities. If you're messy or clean. If you're loud or quiet. If you're very social or you rather... Um, be solo, just things like that. And then they'll pair you with an appropriate person and then they'll place you in a residence hall. And about late July, early August, they'll send you an email with the name of your roommate, where you're living. Um, and then you can start stalking them on Facebook and contacting them. And it's great. Okay. Um, so I just kind of answered that. So like contacting your future roommates will be um, like late July, early August. You'll get a great email and then you can start contacting them. Yeah, so it will be via email. You'll get an email, which is also important that you set up your Augustan email so then you can e get emails from um, residential life or any other involvements you have on campus or on um, the orientation registration email just in case um, you... Um, just in case you have something to fill out or there's a problem with classes or anything like that. So, yes, make sure you set up all that fun jazz so then you're getting ready to go to registration anyway. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. You don't, so Nathaniel, you don't really pick a preferred hall. You're just placed in one. Um, depending on like allergies or specific needs of people, then you may be placed in a certain building, um, but it's pretty random. They just do it based on your needs um, and then the number of people and the number of rooms they have for residential life. I know that each of the buildings are have their own quirks and own um, pluses and minuses. I lived in seminary and at first I was like, oh, it's not Westy. Like, oh, it's not the big one, but I absolutely loved it. It's much closer than Westy. Like you get closer with a smaller group of people and you can always walk to Westy or drive to Westy or take aces to westy or andrine wherever you want to go so it doesn't really don't be like frustrated or nervous for your um res hall place it's what you make it um and any situation any place will be great if you want it to be there okay so roommate wise it just depends on your personality so if you know someone already or you've been chatting with or like um like someone through the Facebook page, go for it. Um, the school suggests getting matches, matched up just because they've been doing it a lot longer than you have. Um, they can match up personality-wise, not just like, oh, I live near you type thing or, of, oh, you look nice type thing. It's more of um, a science, if you will. They have a system to follow. So I got matched up randomly, and it went really well. Um, I know one of my roommates now, she lived with um, her matched up roommate for two years. It went so well. So it's good because they match you up personality wise and it will make sense living. Um, and then hopefully you get along as well, but you'll live well together, which is a good thing too. <coughs> um, so Hannah, math isn't really a required subject. It's a considered perspective within like the quantitative perspectives. Um, but a lot of people don't take it right away, especially if, you've, if you got through pre-calc. There'll be some kind of quantitative um, math perspective. So like psych stats counts as that, statistics. Um, like I said, I took elementary math. So it just depends on your major, what makes sense. You don't want to be taking calc three or calc two if you don't need to. So don't really worry about math right now. And Mary said that too. Okay. <coughs> do, do, do. So if you um, have a preferred roommate and you already like did the random thingy, I would contact residential life at augustana.edu, explain your situation, explain who you want to be roomed with, and then they can switch it up because they're working on that currently. So then they can fix it easily. Okay. So, um, Chris, I'm not quite sure what payment plan you mean, like tuition, food, um, you would contact the business office, um, which is probably like business office at augustana.edu, or you can go through augustana.edu and just search for the business office contact and ask them any questions you have. I don't have a lot of experience with like payment or that um, office at all, so you can always ask that question. So, um, Robert, I'm referring back to 
the two videos I've done so far, they're called like the Q&A, um, preparing for orientation and registration, and Q&A, choosing classes, and they are, um, yeah, they're shared on the links, so the Augustan account got me for that. I'm running a little behind. Okay, Greek life. Okay, first, freshmen can work in ACES, so go for it. They'll be at the um, job fair, so if you see, like, ACES and go talk to them, apply, you'll probably get it as long as you're a good driver, and you'll be good. Greek life is fantastic at Augustana. Um, it's local Greek chapter, so they're only at Augustana, which is pretty cool, meaning that if you see what I'm called is a speed, if you see a speed somewhere, you know that they went to Augie and they've experienced pledging and, like, traditions that you have rather than being a national sorority or fraternity saying like, oh, like, oh, I was this, like, what school did you go to? You automatically know it's Augustana. The um, being local, it makes it much, much cheaper. So my dues are like $250 per year, while compared to nationals, that's like thousands of dollars. That's crazy. Um, so much more affordable, um, smaller sizes. So my sorority is 100. Um, it ranges from like 100 to 20 for sororities. And then for, for fraternities, I think the biggest is around like 80 or so. And then it goes down to like 12. So a bunch of different sizes. Um, there are seven sororities, and then we're just adding a new fraternity this next year. So there'll be eight fraternities and seven sororities, which is huge, very exciting. Um, it's great. Some of my best friends are speeds. Um, I also know like other people and other sororities and fraternities. So don't feel like you're just excluded to your one group, but it's super fun, um, super engaging, involved. Like everyone in my sorority is involved in other things around campus. So it's not just your one defining thing. If you don't want it to be, you can involve, be involved in many different things um, as well as a sorority and fraternity. So I hope that I have to answer your question. You don't really have to worry about like pledging or um, rushing for sororities or fraternities till later in the year. It's around um, February when that starts next year. Um, but just keep your eye out for letters. So pay attention to how they act when they're not really being watched. And then you know their true personalities and like how they interact with other people. They'll have letters all the time. Like I have my lavalier on now. People are aware of their letters. Just pay attention. Then you can find groups you really like um, and then go to like gatherings and different events that they put on to get to know them better and find your spot. Okay. So what happens if someone doesn't get along with the roommate? That's fair. Definitely a concern that a lot of people probably have. Um, I know that some people have had some issues um, and you usually just contact the residential life. They're very accommodating. Um, as long as you explain what's going on and they have an empty room available, they'll switch you if necessary, if they deem appropriate. Um, you can always talk to your CA first, which is your community advisor. If there's trouble, they are trained to deal with any conflicts or situations. So they're a great resource that lives on your floor. Um, they'll know both you and the roommate that you're having difficulty with. Um, and they'll be able to help. If it gets worse, then they'll be able to talk to the people, um, their bosses and directors at the residential life. But your CA is a great, um, great person that's more relatable than like an adult. Um, you can talk to a student who's one or two years older than you, which will help. Um, life like on the weekends. So working in the office of student life, we usually have um, an event, one event at least every other or every weekend. Those events can range from movie nights in Olin. They can be bingo nights, which are huge. Um, special events, which include like magicians and hypnotists and um, then like concerts and comedy shows and slew fest, which is like a big um, musical event and like um, musical festival at the end of the year. We have homecoming events. Um, we have Greek week, which is at the end of the year. So many different events over the weekends, or you can just hang out in your room, chill, watch movies, sleep, eat a late breakfast, do whatever you want. Weekends are pretty chill during the day, and then the activity usually occurs around 7 or so. People get dinner, and then the events are around 7 or 8, so that's when like they get dinner, and then they head to the events. Um, super fun, super engaging. It's great. Um, okay. So... Your advisor at orientation will probably not be the same advisor you get when school starts, but they still have plenty of information um, and experience, so you can ask them any questions you have. And then uh, during Welcome Week, you'll meet your real advisor for the first part of the year. And then once you choose your major, declare your major, then you get your major advisor. So um, your original advisor for first year um, 
it could be any major. I had a biology and chemistry advisor, but I'm L ed. So like in the springtime when I declared elementary education, then I met my advisor. So you'll have multiple <laughs> throughout um, your experience at Augustana, which is great though. You get different perspectives and experiences and you can use that to better your experience at Augie. So all in all, the advisor orientation will probably not be yours unless it's a really big coincidence, but I doubt it. <laughs> Um, okay, so honors program mostly focuses on a different FYI course instead of like the normal FYI English course, you take the honors version. So I'm guessing it would be a little more challenging or have a specific curriculum that honors follows. I don't know if it really affects any perspectives classes. I don't think it does. It just, um, changes that like FYI version into honors. So, um, and you can always ask the advisor that is with you when you're picking perspectives, um, how that affects it, but I really don't think it does. And if you watch the video from last time called Picking Classes, it'll go over the perspectives that you can choose from, and you're supposed to pick two from each, so you're flexible, all that fun jazz. So that's a nice preview for the video from last time. Fully recommend watching it, it was a hoot. Okay, so sports, um, because we're D3, there's not, I don't know if there's like a specific way to try out. Um, I know that there are some like walk-ons or like, I think they're called yellow shirts um, at times. So if you contact the coach or contact the athletic department, they can get you involved with the sports. Um, we also have club sports here. Almost every sport has a club version. So like that's more an informal, not really varsity or school, school affiliated, but it's still competitive um and fun like you still travel and like play other schools it's just um less of commitment so you can be involved in other things too um and then we have i am sports too which are just things you sign up for with a team that you create and then you just play for fun so it's the different sports um but if you're interested in joining like varsity sports i would definitely contact the athletic department as soon as possible and you can find that information um, through augustana.edu and just look up athletic department and you'll be contacting Dave Rath or like his assistants. Okay. Okay. Is someone's going to pick you up from the airport? I'm guessing you're an international student. Um, I don't really know how that's going to work. I think if you're an international student, then you'll work through the international student life office and they'll have um, resources and a system set up for you. Don't really know where you're going with that. Um, fresh and live on TLAs. So TLAs are transitional living areas or living apartments, and they're for juniors because you're transitioning from dorm life into your senior off-campus living. Um, so that's just a junior thing. I know that some TLAs this year had to be switched into sophomore living just because there's a really big class and we couldn't accommodate um, all of the sophomores in the dorms. So they opened up like some apartments for them, but that's not really common. So you'll most likely be in the dorm. Either Erickson or Swanson are the sophomore dorms. And then um, Westerlin, Andrean, and Seminary are the freshman dorms. And the TLAs are like certain houses or buildings. So that's a different thing. You can worry about that for junior year. No worries. Okay. Um, so the pre-law major, I'm not super familiar with it, but I know that they'll have certain steps for you to follow. So if you have really specific questions, you can always ask the advisor who is at orientation for the contact information for the pre-law major advisor um, or just who is a the department head for that major or has experience with the pre-law major as an advisor or a professor and they'll get you to the right person so you can ask more specific questions. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it works. The food on campus is fantastic. The CSL is the main um, hub for food. You all have been there if you've visited um, campus before. It's a buffet style with different um, stations. So you have like the American Grill, you have the Carver, you have, um, I think it's Wild Times. I always get that wrong, which is like vegan um, and gluten-free. Uh, the Carver is more like um, homey foods and then American Grill is like burgers and chicken sandwiches and stuff like that. Always have a salad bar and some fruit and yogurt sandwich bar. And then the back is like the Chinese, the pizza, pasta, um, stuff like that. So the food's good. You start to realize the patterns of food um, and you 
definitely have your favorites eventually, but people get very excited for certain foods. So it's good. So that's one um, place. The brew has good sandwiches and soups um, during the day. The soups goes really fast. So if you want soup, you got to get in line fast around like the 11 o'clock hour. Um, and then we have the snack shack, which is open around, I think it's like 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or 2.30. So like that is good for sandwiches or like burgers, chicken sandwiches, um, cheeseburgers, or you can make your own sandwich or they have brew meals as well. So you can just grab the packaged sandwich or salad or um, wrap or whatever. And then there's chips and like gum and candy and drinks and stuff there. And then we have the um, the Westerland Market or like the Westy, oh, what's that called? What do we call it? I don't remember, but it's this um, like convenience store type thing in Westie that's open at night. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all the food offered on campus, but it's good. Um, you can use your Viking bucks or your meal swipes and yeah, you'll be all set on food. Don't worry about that. So packages from family, you will go to the building. It's called Sorensen. It's where that big bridge says Augustana College. Um, the building is like brick looks kind of like a bomb shelter but in the basement of there um is where you pick up your packages and then the your parents or guardians or family friends whoever um will just make sure that they write your name your box number what you'll get um during orientation and registration and um augustana's address which is augustana college 639 38th street um, Rock Island Illinois 61201 and make sure you have the box number on it so then they can identify um, the student as well, but make sure you have their name on it too. Um, and then they'll pick it up. They'll get an email that they have a package. They'll pick it up and they'll be good to go. Okay. Mm -mm. So not all residence halls have air conditioning. It's okay. You'll get through it. I did. Many people have before you. Um, Westerland has AC in each of its wings. And Andrean and Sem do not, but a fan is great. Opening a window, fresh air, all good things. Um, it should be okay. You'll survive, I promise. Bring light layers and you'll be good. So, no, not all of them have air conditioning, but they're completely livable and there's AC in all the campus buildings. So, if it's hot, just stay in there till later at night when it cools down and you'll be all good. Okay, so feeling safe about getting around campus. Yes, I feel very safe around campus. Um, when I'm on the quad, definitely feel safe. I still pay attention to my surroundings just in case because it is um, open. Anyone can be on campus, but I definitely feel safe walking around by myself. Um, I know that down past campus gets a little fishy at times. It is Rock Island. It is a college um it's a college town, so there's a lot of people that rent or, like, lease around here. So it is, like, there are some moments where it's a little more dangerous than usual, but overall I feel very safe. Augie has what's called the bubble, so, like, you kind of feel encased in the bubble and you're safe in the bubble. Um, make sure you stay aware of your surroundings, but overall I feel safe and I'm comfortable walking around, um, driving around Rock Island, Moline. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't be too worried as long as you're aware of your surroundings, like I said. Okay. So the advisor orientation will not be the one that you wrote dear advisor letter to. Um, because the advisor at orientation is probably just someone who's available to help with class registration and will not specifically be um, the one assigned to your group or your peer mentor group. That'd be a pretty big coincidence. Um, so, yeah, the orientation one is just someone who's available. Obviously, they have experience. They are an advisor. They just may not be the one that's assigned to your peer mentor group that you're a part of. It's just a small chance because there are, like, 50 different peer mentor groups, so 50 advisors. Um, so it's just some chance. But you wrote the letter to your real advisor who will be in charge of your peer mentor group. So then during the year when you're starting to get a hang of college, get a hang of school, like, getting um, – picking new classes for a second term and um, deciding what to declare and how that all works, they will better be able to get to know you and know your preferences and any needs you have through that letter rather than like writing it to the orientation people who you probably won't see again. So that's why you write the letter and that's why you may not have written it to your 
the person who will be at orientation because it's probably not your advisor. I hope that makes sense. If it didn't, ask another question. Um, parking. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, parking is a challenge at times. You will always have a parking spot around your residence hall that may not be the direct parking lot right next to the door of your residence hall, but it's close enough that you'll walk and it's worth driving. Um, so right now, Brodal, which is the Communication Sciences and Disorders building, is um, closed and being reconstructed. So that extra parking lot near the um, CSL slash Gerber building is closed. So that takes up a lot of um extra parking that people use to go to dinner or to go to like Greek meetings, stuff like that during like the nighttime. Um, that whole parking lot during the day is closed. So you'll just keep your car near your residence hall um, or on like the streets for free parking. Um, what else was I going to say? There's also because the Brodal parking lot is closed, there are speech um, client um, parking spots near that building. So there are like six or seven of them that are reserved for them until like 8 PM. So just know that parking when you're trying to move from within campus is challenging, but you will always have a spot, um, for you near your residence hall. There will never be an overage of cars and not enough parking for where you're going to live. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, yeah. So parking's okay. It's not great at like certain high peak times, like dinner time, but overall you'll be able to find a spot, um, especially at your residence hall. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, freshmen can have a car on campus. What you'll do is during um, orientation registration, they'll probably have a table. It's public safety um, and they'll offer you like a parking permit. I think if I remember correctly, it's like um, $100 per semester and like 200 for the whole year, something like that, that kind of range. But yeah, it's a little pricey, but that um, price secures that you have a spot near your residence hall and they'll tell you um, what residence sticker to get. So the, the parking sticker coordinates to that parking lot. Um, just know that if you try to park in places that say like, for faculty or um, dining services, you will get a ticket. And the tickets from public safety are $50 and the tickets from Rock Island are $25, which is not a fun thing to deal with. Um, I got my first parking ticket this year and it was not a good time. So listen to the signs, respect your sticker and where you're supposed to park and you'll be a-okay. Okay. okay. I don't know what insurance you should get as an international student, but like Mary said above, if you contact the international student office, they will be able to answer your specific questions. I'm sorry, I don't know more about that. I know there is one through Augustana, so if you're comfortable with that, um, go with that, but um, I'm not quite sure just because I'm not an international student. I'm sorry. Um, what's something I wish Augie would have that I don't currently have? Um, faster Wi-Fi. <laughs> so because all students have at least a phone, mostly a laptop, sometimes an iPad, sometimes like a smart TV, whatever, there's a lot of people and a lot of um, devices on the Wi-Fi. So it can get a little slow at times, um, especially around finals week or, um, um, yeah, just it gets a little hectic. So just know that, yes, there'll be times that it gets slow. Um, whenever it does, I usually click on my Wi-Fi options and go to free Augie Wi-Fi. That way it kind of bounces back and forth and then you get back on the secured. Um, it's been much better this past year than it has in years past. I know they're really working to improve it, but just know that the Wi-Fi can have some difficulties at times. But when you're in the um, main building, so if you're at the library, that one's a really good spot. Um it's a lot better at some times in the library than like in your residence halls because you're farther away from the router and all that fun jazz. So yeah, that would probably be the one thing a little faster on the Wi-Fi. But other than that, Augustine is pretty darn great. So I can get handle the Wi-Fi situations at times. Um, 
Yes, there's a fee for parking. I said there's probably around $100 per semester, close to $200 or $300 for the whole year. But because it's semesters, it'll be divided up differently than it has in the past. Um, I've never bought a I've never bought a parking permit, so I don't know from experience, but I know it's around that range. Okay. So what do I like to do in the Quad Cities? There isn't a lot of like activity activity to do. I know there's the River Bandit Stadium. I've been there like once or twice. There's a baseball team. That's fun. Um, I really like going out to eat. I'm a foodie, so I um, like to explore different restaurants. So those are good. So like Steel Plow and Lemongrass, those are my favorite. Um, one's Thai food, that's Lemongrass. And then Steel Plow is really good burgers and sandwiches with the really massive milkshakes. So those are good. Um, this summer, I'll be at Augustana, so I'm going to explore more of like the summer side of it with warm weather. I'm hoping to walk to the farmer's market in Davenport. Um, I know there's a bowling alley around here, like QC Entertainment has bowling and um, laser tag and stuff, but mostly because of the Office of Student Life's um, events and programs, I'm set entertainment-wise with those, like going to the hypnotist or going to the comedy show or going on an excursion to the Cubs game. That is pretty entertaining, and it kind of helps fill the gaps that Rock Island doesn't really provide entertainment-wise. But the restaurants are pretty good, so I recommend exploring some Rock Island restaurants. Okay. Um, it's my favorite learning perspective course. That's challenging. So I took a philosophy course, and um, then you're required to take a religion course as well. And they're very similar in that, like, you read a lot, and then you kind of soak up all the information, and then you, like, make your own opinion, and then you argue about it. And so the philosophy one was Life and Death with Bonzon, one of the best classes I've ever taken. It was so interesting. It, like, talked about morally, um, like, killing people. <laughs> it's a little complicated, but it was interesting just talking about very controversial ideas from um, different perspectives and talking about different theories within the philosophy discipline and, um, yeah, just kind of learning how to argue, learning how to make a good argument that like was organized. And then on the other hand, my religion course was super challenging. Um, it was Catholic theology or Christian theology. And my professor had had like three um, PhDs in like religion and philosophy and theology. And it was just really engaging and difficult. I'm one who really likes, um, who really likes challenging classes because I feel like I'm more engaged. Um, so those are some of my favorites, the ones that like involve deep thinking and are harder just because it had, they have higher expectations for you as a learner rather than like going through a really easy class and not really trying. So those are two of my favorite perspectives. Um, let's see. So where you park for orientation day, there will be parking at the Gerber center, which is like the CSL food area. Um, so parking there, if it fills up, because it tends to fill up eventually, um, I would recommend going to the Centennial slash Carver parking lot. Many, many parking spots there. And then you just have to cross the street and walk straight um, through the library and upstairs. And you'll see plenty of people guiding you and telling you where to go and where to park. Um, I'm sure there'll be signs that say, like, orientation and registration parking here. There you go. Perfect. And then there'll be students, I'm sure, roaming around helping you get in the right place. So don't worry about that. Okay. Yep. Professors. Um, I am a hundred percent satisfied with my academic advising. My advisor, his name is Randy. He is super friendly, very knowledgeable. He's been working at Augustana for like over 30 years. Um, I like he has my phone number. I text him if I get concerned or freaked out on something or nervous about um, registering for classes or I had to take a content test to get into student teaching. So like he's super reliable, very friendly, open um, for questions or concerns of any kind. Um, amazing. And I know that a lot of advisors and advisees get very close um, because you have such a small campus. There's not as many students assigned to an advisor. So you can form those um, good relationships. You can, they know you, they know who you are, they know how you, um, how you think, how you learn, like what your interests are, involvements are, because they're probably your professors as well. It's not just a person you go to see once 
every year to pick new classes? Is someone you see across the campus and you wave or you like catch up and have a conversation or it's someone you have as a professor or you see them in the hallway or you stop at their office all the time. So he is amazing. All advisors that I've heard have been really amazing in helping um, find the best path for their students. That's their job. They wouldn't be an advisor if they didn't want to help you and like push you through and have the best experience possible at Augustana. Okay, um, let's see. The dorms. Um, so I lived in seminary. It is a three-person um, arrangement, but you get two rooms, which is pretty cool. It was awesome. We had all of our beds in one, and then we had kind of like a social area with a couch and a TV and like our mini fridge and the um, microwave and everything there. It was great. The location was amazing. I would leave three minutes before all my classes and still get there with time to spare. Um, and it's, it's comfortable. It's safe. It's secure. All of the, like I said before, all of the dorms have their pros and cons. Some are farther away, but have AC while some are closer, but a little smaller. So it just depends. And like I said before, it all depends on like how you make it. So if you're going to complain the whole time, then you're going to have a negative experience. But if you make the best of it, you get close to the people in your dorm. It's going to be amazing and you're going to make awesome memories. So it just depends on how you make it. Okay, yes, Office of Student Life, that's fantastic. So because you'll be a first year, um, it won't be a huge commitment just because you won't have a leadership position, you won't be in charge of anything. Um, you'll probably be on a committee to help with a certain part of the OSL. So um, you could help with like bingo game nights or help with the comedy shows or the special events, whatever's going on. Um, and during like the student activities fair, which I get to plan, um, there will be an Office of Student Life table. You can go up and ask how you can get involved. I'm sure they'll have a committee fair. So then if you're interested, you can join a committee. I know a lot of first years did that this year. Um, just so you get your foot in the door. Um, the directors get to see your face. You get more familiar with how the OSL works. And then when you are turning or like starting your sophomore year or ending your freshman year, you can apply to be on a certain board or involved in a certain part of the office and then hired um, either as a volunteer or as a paid staff, depending on the position and what you're interested in. So right now, like as a freshman, the commitment level is your choice, but then the more leadership you have, the more responsibility you have. But with the OSL, it's pretty flexible with like times and everything. Um, so you can work between classes or at night or whatever works for you and your schedule. So it just depends on what you're involved in and how much you want to be involved. Okay. Okay, finding jobs is super easy. Um, during Welcome Week, they have what's called the job fair. So it's literally, mine was in the brew. And it was just a bunch of tables and a bunch of job opportunities. Um, one of the first tables I walked up to was the athletic department. And um, he asked me, Dave Rath asked me if I knew how to score volleyball and knew how to like um, take stats for volleyball. And I said, yes. And he said, great, you're hired. So it can be as easy as that. Um, your past experience can be a factor or it doesn't have to be. Um, I know the library hires, you can work at the desks in your residence hall, so you can do homework or hang out with friends while you're at the desk. Um, you can work in the athletic department like I did, you can get involved in admissions, um, you can work for residential life. There's so many, so many opportunities. You can work at the OSL, no, I'm sorry, the CSL, so like working in cooking, um, all those things, so many opportunities to work. Um, so go to the job fair, ask questions, get involved, get applications and you're most likely going to get a job. So, because they need students to fill spots too. So don't worry about that. So I would love for you to get a job right away in the, um, in the OSL, but like I described before, you kind of have to like show your face around, show that you would commit and then apply later on, but you can still be a volunteer um, and help out on a committee. So go for that page. If you want to be involved, you just have to show your involvement and your interest and you'll do great things. So yeah. And if you ever see me around or other people in like the OSL polo um, during welcome, week, can always ask like how you can get involved during the activities fair is a great way. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that you're super excited. I'm sorry it's not as just a, oh, you're interested, great, here's a job. But there's more than um, many, 
Sorry, right, any opportunity for you to get involved as a volunteer and start um, participating though as well. So let's see. That's a good question, Nicholas. So if you're having password or email problems, um, I would email orientation at augustana.edu. No, registration at augustana.edu, and they can help you um, get either to ITS or reset the password for you. I don't really know how to help with you right then, um, right now, but that would be a great way. Oh, and Mary answered that. I'm behind. Okay. Yes, you can bring your own fridge mini fridge. There's a certain wattage you have to stay within. Um, that will be on the website or like you'll get a bunch of residential life information at orientation. Um, so just make sure you stay within that wattage. Most mini fridges are, um, and then you're all set. But yeah, that was helpful just to have like milk for protein shakes or like apples in there, or we kept some dino nuggets in our freezer in our mini fridge. So that was helpful. Okay. Mm -mm. So for me, I didn't spend a lot of money as a freshman um, just because you're on campus. You don't really leave that often unless someone else has a car or you have a car. But there's really no need to leave unless you're going to get food or like going to the doctor or something. Um, your meal plans are paid for, so you're not buying food very often. And um, everything you really need is already like with you. So you don't spend a lot of money unless you're like intentionally wanting to spend money. And if you have a um, – if you have a job, then that like naturally gives you some pocket money. So I wouldn't really be worried about money on average just because um, everything's pretty much paid for through tuition, through your housing, through your food plan. So everything's kind of handled for you. And just like additional, I want to go to Chipotle rather than eating at the OS or the CSL. Why do I keep doing that? The CSL, um, that's kind of your call. So just think about like what you would prefer and then you can always budget um, when you get to school and just see how you want to work it yourself. So I don't, I can't give you like an average amount per month because it's different for everyone and their preferences. Okay. So what we should expect on orientation day, that's like this whole video. Um, I started talking about a lot of the details in the beginning of the video, so feel free to like go back and watch that. Um, the majority for you to know is that it's a full day. You're probably you're going to be separate from your parents for the majority of the time, but it's okay because you have student things to learn and they have parent things to learn. Um, what you need to bring is any of the forms that they told you to bring for um, orientation registration. So that's like a W-4 form for um, on-campus employment, usually like a health form and maybe like one more thing if you're like accepting the insurance or declining the insurance through Augustana, I think that's what it was. This was three years ago. So I'm trying to remember, but I think those are the main things. Um, and then just be, be prepared to take your ID photo, which lasts a full four years, which is awesome. Um, so that's pretty much it. I went into much more detail um, in the beginning of the video. So once I'm done, you can go back and watch it. Okay. Can you talk a little about res life? Adam, what in general about res life? Like working for res life, um, living in the dorms. Give me a little bit more, please. Um, all, like my experience with residential life has been good. Um, you get a CA, which is a community advisor, um, on your floor. So they'll introduce you once you know your um, housing place. They'll start contacting you just being like, hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm your CA. Like, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here for you type thing. Your peer mentor will do the same thing and just being like, hey, I'm your peer mentor. I'm going to be hanging out with you for welcome week. Like, I'm here as a resource. If you have any questions, here we go um, type thing. So they're great. They live on your floor, like I said. Great resource. I'm um, usually one or two years older than you, and they're really joyful, fun people. So get to know them. They're a great resource if you have conflict or if you want to get to know other people or get involved on campus. They're awesome for that. Okay, let's see here. So electronics, I know that you can't bring an AC um, unit or like a heating unit just because it has too much of wattage and it uses just too much power, which Augustan does not like. Um, so certain wattages aren't allowed. Um, you can't have candles, pretty much any of like the stereotypical, oh, you're living in a dorm, you can't have this type thing. That's pretty much consistent with um, the rules. So, and like I said, you'll get registration 
or yeah, you'll get information at registration and orientation. So um, if you have any other questions, you can address that or you can always go to um, residential life um, website, which is connected to the augustana.edu website. And there are plenty, plenty of information there and a contact there too. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay. So books, books are huge. Books are important. Um, so you will know what books to purchase once you have picked your classes. You're picking classes during orientation and registration. So by the end of the day, you could go to the bookstore and pick the books if you really wanted to and buy them or rent them if you wanted to. Um, I don't really know if I would do that because the bookstore tends to be a little pricey. Um, I usually go to Amazon and look up like used versions, but like, like new versions of the book, um, much cheaper and, um, you get it sent to you. So you don't have to worry about like bringing it back and forth. Um, you can also in, um, the Facebook group, a lot of upperclassmen will comment or like ask if people have, um, if they want a specific book or if they need this book and you can meet on campus and like exchange money for the book. Um, so that's a great way to get it cheaper because they want it off their hands and you want it for cheap. Um, you can always rent the books from the bookstore, but you have to remember to return it or you get a fee and then you can't really write in the books. So I would recommend getting it for yourself, getting them used, but like, like new or new, um, that way you get to keep them, especially when they're major related. Um, so I've kept all of my methods books and all of my like teaching books because I want to reference them and I have written notes in them. So it just depends on your personality and um, if your classes relate to the um, major you have so for then if you want to keep them or if you're okay renting them. Um, and then there's also like electronic books, so like online books that people can use. I did that for one of mine. So it just depends on your um, preference. Um, and then also if you go to augustana.edu and you scroll all the way to the bottom, it will say bookstore. If you click bookstore, um, it will bring up the bookstore website and then it will say get my textbooks or get textbooks or something like that. If you click that, then you just click all the, all the courses that you're in. So if you're in psych 100, you'll click psych, the level 100, the, um, and then the professor that you're teaching and all the book that's teaching it will pop up and what you need to order. And it will show you the used and the new prices. And then you can um, copy the ISBN code into like Amazon or Half Price Books or Chag or whatever. Um, that ISBN code is unique to that book. So you know you're getting that exact book and not a different version or like a different author or anything like that. So I recommend using the ISBN code. Okay. Okay, so Nick, one meal is different everywhere you go. So if you go to the CSL, which is like the buffet um, style, then you can go, then you can eat whatever you want for as long as you want. I know people who sit there um, during Sunday and they go in the morning, they use one meal swipe and then they sit there all day and they eat meals when they get hungry <laughs> um, and they just study throughout the day. So that's one meal at the CSL. One meal at the brew would include um, either a sandwich, a muffin, a bagel, um, a salad, soup, or like a wrap, and then two sides. Um, so either apple, carrots, cottage cheese, um, coleslaw or one bag of chips and then you get a drink and those drinks can be like juices, sodas, um, water. Yeah. So that would be one meal at the brew and then one meal at the CSL and then one meal at the snack shack is very similar to the brew and that you get like one entree. You get two sides or one bag of chips and one drink. And then at the, um, Westy, what is that called? I, don't, I keep forgetting what it's called. They call it like the Westerlin Market, but it's not. Oh, the Sea Store. That's what it's called, the Sea Store. <laughs> when you get to the Sea Store, um, it's very similar to the brew as well. So you get like one entree, um, two sides if it's not chips, one bag of chips, and then a drink. Um, and they also have different options. So like you can get a frozen pizza option there. So there, there's a little variability. If you just ask the person at the desk or like at the checkout thing, they'll be able to help you. Okay. 
yes, Paige, if you're interested, if you really know you want to be pre-med and you have questions or concerns or you just want to make sure you're on the right page with everything, for sure, contact um, those professors. It's not going to hurt anything. If anything, will make you look good and they'll start to know your name. You can meet with them too to make sure your advisor is giving you the right track so then when you declare then you're already all set um so yeah you're all set for that okay guys if you don't have any other questions i am so glad that you guys joined make sure if you didn't catch up on everything or didn't see the whole video you go back and watch the parts um especially at the beginning where it gives you all the details about the day just another orientation is going to be fantastic if you take um a deep breath you'll be great meet new people, have a great time, and enjoy Augustana. So thank you again, and have a great day. I'll see you at orientation.